Well, this is Mike Swanson of uh, Wall Street Window. I want to talk with you today about what really makes uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies trade up and down. Now, I'm looking at live coin watch and, you know, every second that goes by, this thing is moving. And uh, look, in one year, Bitcoin's gone down 47%. In 90 days, it's gone 29%. Now, in the last 30 days, it's up, up 7.53%. But in the last seven days, down almost 3%. Uh, but look, it can go up uh, tomorrow. It could go up next week. This thing is highly volatile, and that attracts uh, a lot of people into uh, trading it. But what makes it go up and down? Because the thing about it is, um, you scroll down and you can see what it's done in its existence. It had a huge run in 2017 to $20,000. And then you know it, it fell back down below 10, seemed to do nothing for several years. Then after 2020, um, the, it exploded uh, when the, after the stock market crashed, after the shutdowns, uh, the, the S&P fell 33%. The NASDAQ fell even more. And then the stock market had a massive run and so did Bitcoin. Bitcoin went up uh, even more on a percentage basis until it peaked out and has fallen even more than the stock market, but the swings have been massive. And the thing about it is there's so uh, much uh, hype, uh, that might be the way to put it, a misinformation about Bitcoin, about cryptocurrencies out there. We have been told so many things about them that have proven not to be real. And that has to lead us to ask, what really makes it go up and down? For example, we were told that Bitcoin would replace the U.S. dollar, uh, that the U.S. dollar would go down in value and everyone would start using Bitcoin. Uh, and so you had to buy it before that happened. And we were also told that everyone would just start to use Bitcoin instead of money. It would be the future of money. The reality is no one's really using it for money uh, at all. Uh, in the town I live in, there's not a single business that accepts Bitcoin, not one. Sure, you can do transactions on the internet with it, but in day-to-day -day real life, go to the McDonald's, go to the Walmart, go to your uh, pub or, or restaurant. They don't take it. It's not, it's not displaced currency. Uh, so when it still goes up, it still goes down what's truly moving it. Well, uh, I'm going to show you facts based in the mathematical relationship Bitcoin has with other financial assets. Because this is based in math, it's not simply a theory that I'm uh, coming up with. Um, you know, it, it's not something I'm making up like so many people do when they talk about crypto coins uh, or Bitcoin. It's a fact based in mathematics. No different than me saying that um, the color black is black. That I mean, I can't, if I say black is blue, it's not turning blue. It's always black. Uh, the color black is black and one plus one equals two. So what I'm gonna show you is based in reality. And once you see it, you will know what really makes Bitcoin go up and down. Uh, and anyone who tells you, something else is going on, you'll know that they don't know what they're talking about or they're trying to trick you or misinform you. And when you know what's really happening, then you can base your trading and investing, investing decisions on hard reality. And, and that's how you win in the markets. I've been trading now since the 1990s. Okay, uh, this is a chart of Bitcoin uh, price in the US dollar no different than this uh, really but this is the website stockcharts.com and it enables me to put all sorts of indicators uh, on my charts um you know you can see the green line is the 200 day moving average the red line is 150 the blue line 
is the 50 day moving average. And this is a candlestick chart of Bitcoin. But what's I want to draw your attention to is the indicator right below it. It's a correlation uh, indicator in what it's doing. It's measuring the trading relationship Bitcoin has to the U.S. dollar. And it's doing it over 200 days. Uh, so when they, in, in, and this comes out when you do this calculation as a, a positive one, all the way down to negative one. And a positive one would be something that trades together. So if Bitcoin goes up 5% tomorrow, the US dollar goes up 5% tomorrow. If Bitcoin drops, the dollar drops. And they do this day after day after day. In other words, they would trade perfectly together. A perfect correlation if the indicator was one. And I'm looking at the 200 average price uh, and, and, and correlating the relationship between that. So this is a long-term relationship. It's not just like, what happened in the past 15 minutes, but over the past 200 days. Now, if the ratio, if the correlation came out to be zero, what that would indicate is that there really is no trading relationship when uh, it's all random. You know, one one can go up and the other down or up and up and both up uh, day by day. It's all just random what goes on. Negative one would mean that they trade opposite to one another. Well, the cor the correlation with Bitcoin to the U.S. dollar is negative 0.87 over the past 200 days. Um, so <laughs> what that means is while Bitcoin has dropped, uh, the U.S. dollar has gone up. They've actually traded the complete opposite with one another. They've had a negative correlation to one another. So when we've been told for years that Bitcoin, you know, you buy Bitcoin because the dollar is going to go down, the opposite has happened. All that was false. All that was misleading. All of it was a destructive hype to anyone who believed it. And I'm here not to be a Bitcoin guru or a crypto guru, but to tell you the mathematical relationship of the real world, what Bitcoin is really doing and this is undeniable i challenge any of the crypto gurus out there to dispute the mathematics that i'm using in this video and showing you in this video and revealing to everyone in the financial world the bitcoin gurus who keep saying bitcoin is going to replace the us dollar have been proven wrong over the past several years and this year proves them more wrong than ever before because the U.S. dollar has gone up and Bitcoin has gone down. The trading relationship has been negative. On days the dollar goes up, Bitcoin tends to decline. So what's really moving it? I'm not trying to tell you that it's just simply trading opposite the U.S. dollar. There are times when Bitcoin goes up. Is it just going up because people are selling the dollar to buy Bitcoin? I really doubt it because uh, while, yes, uh, the market cap for Bitcoin here or the, is uh, $442 billion. Um, that's a fraction of the market cap for the global Forex market when it comes to global currencies. It's a simple drop in the bucket. There are trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions of US dollar in circulation and trillions and trillions of treasury bonds and stocks in circulation. Bitcoin is a simple, simple, small, fraction of the global financial system. But the trading relationship of the idea that Bitcoin would go up and the dollar would go down, totally false. So there's more going on than that. Um, and that is the second chart. So in this, it shows the correlation of Bitcoin with the NASDAQ 100. That relationship is 0 0.9, very close to one. In other words, when the NASDAQ goes up, Bitcoin goes up. When the NASDAQ goes down, Bitcoin goes down. The Bitcoin crypto market has an extremely close correlation with the NASDAQ 100. And that should be no shock when you think about what's taking place. You know, when the stock market crashed in March, the spring of 2020, 
Bitcoin fell even more than the stock market fell even more than 50%. And then the, and then the big rally in Bitcoin core, happened at the same time that the stock market went up. At the same time that millions and millions of people opened up Robinhood accounts and entered the markets for the first time. And a lot of those people also bought crypto coins. And the recent peak uh, in 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 or decline in in Bitcoin has taken place along with the stock market going down, and then the recent rally in Bitcoin has coincided with a rally in the stock market. The S and P has gone up about ten percent in the past, you know, five weeks or so. Now there's even a closer trading relationship than with the Nasdaq 100, and that is with the Ark ETF, zero point nine two. Uh, the ARK ETF is an exchange traded fund that holds highly speculative, highly volatile technology stocks. So what, what, what do we conclude from this? What does this, you know, what does this mean? Well, I would like to suggest to you that what Bitcoin in the crypto market simply is, is an arena of speculation, not an arena of value, not something that's going to you know, displace the U.S. dollar or global currencies. It's simply a speculative instrument. And when people, um, when the stock market goes up, there's some people that want to take on bigger risks uh, and, or get into things more volatile than stocks, more volatile than exchange traded funds that simply like track the NASDAQ 100. Um, and, and those people are jumping or have bought Bitcoin. And then when the stock market falls, Bitcoin simply falls more than the stock market. It is sort of like a option on, on the stock market. Like instead of buying stocks, some people buy call options. Instead of buying stocks, some people buy cryptocurrencies. It's as simple as that. It's an instrument of speculation. Therefore, if you want to engage in trading in the crypto world, realize you know, what you're really doing. You are simply speculating on the price changes in crypto coins. Um, and when the market stock market goes up, it tends to go up. When the stock market doesn't, they tend to fall. It's, it's, not, it's not more complicated than that. As far as an investment, very difficult to invest in something that is so volatile. And, and it's different than buying a stock where you can get paid a dividend and you own an interest in a company. And then if the company gets bought out, you know, they have to buy your shares too. I bought over a hundred stocks in 2020 and something like five or six of them have been bought out by other companies. And when they bought those companies, <clears throat> they had to buy my shares too. The, the companies buying, the, the, buying out the shares of the other one, they had to buy all of the shares. That doesn't happen in the crypto world because if there's no reason for anyone to buy all of one single crypto coin because they represent ownership of nothing, you know, unlike a stock. Uh, it's just simply an instrument of speculation. For example, if you were to buy every single crypto, every single Bitcoin in the world, all of them, all of them, just like um, Elon Musk is bought, is, you know, if Elon Musk were to buy Twitter, he's got to buy all the shares, all of them. Well, if he was to buy all the Bitcoins, then so what? You know, if he if he buys all of Twitter, he owns the company. You know, he's like he becomes a CEO. He can boss all these people around, tell them to do things, fire them if he wants to. If he bought all the bitcoins, he has nothing. He, can, you know, he owns nothing. He just owns a lot of bitcoins. So what? You know, you know, if he does buy all the bitcoins, and the bitcoin actually sort of becomes useless, and there's a no, you know, as a, as an instrument of uh, uh, of transactions in the in the financial markets, it becomes completely useless. It, useless as an instrument of speculation. So that shows you in itself how the crypto market is just not the same thing as stocks. It's the same thing as exchange traded funds. It's an extreme speculative instrument and should be treated as such. And realize if the stock market goes down, Bitcoin will fall more than the stock market. If the stock market goes up, it can it tends to go up more. Um, so what do you do? You buy Bitcoin if you want to increase your risks. That's what you do. If you want to gamble it up in the financial markets, Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies um, are the way to do it.
you know, I don't advocate increasing one's risks, you know, in trading or the financial markets. In fact, in the long run, if you do the opposite with a good money management strategy, you actually make more money. But uh, let me close this out with sharing with you. I personally do, uh, you kind of figured it. I don't mess around with cryptocurrencies and Bitcoins, but um, I trade and um, everything that you can chart in the financial markets, um, there are patterns to trading. And I put out a video last week about the one pattern, the single best pattern that I've ever used. And it can be used in any single market because it's a price pattern. And um, I call it the twofold formula. And I'm going to include a link in this video for you to watch that if you want to get it. And if you want to, you can use it in the future for your cryptocurrency trading. I suggest you do it for stock trading. Uh, but regardless, the pattern is real. I've used it and it's in the description of this video and a link. If you, I'd look, I do videos on all sorts of topics. I do, you know, I do videos on investing. I do videos on news. I do videos on politics. I do videos on real estate. I do videos on history. If you want more videos about the crypto market in, in, in trading, hit like, and I'll do that. And uh, if you want to get my next video, um, cause I got one I'm going to do tomorrow about how the YouTube, al YouTube algorithms are distorting financial media and the type of messaging you're getting. Hit the subscribe button and then hit the bell next to it. You'll be alerted by YouTube as soon as that video is up and for you to watch.